Hey there guys, how's it going? This is Mike coming back at you with another video on pre-calculus. In the previous video, uh, we talked about uh, polynomials, what those things look like, uh, and some properties about pol polynomials and their graphs. Uh, we talked about end behavior, roots, multiplicities, turning points, all that good stuff. Uh, in this video, we are going to transition a little bit. Uh, we are going to talk about dividing polynomials and the two main ways uh, that we can do that. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the two main ways that we do this are either polynomial long division uh, or synthetic division. Uh, only one of these can be used in a particular case, but when we can use it, uh, it is a lot quicker, a lot nicer. There are some tricks that you have to uh, watch out for, but if you don't get tripped up by those, then it's really nice and easy uh, to go through uh, and divide polynomials in that particular instance. So first we'll get the nastier one out of the way, which is polynomial long division. Uh, this is the set of steps that you go through uh, to do polynomial uh, long division. Um, it's going to make a lot more sense, though, when we see the process being done on an actual sample problem. So for now, I'm, I'm just going to go through this list. We'll see how it's used in a little bit. So first, you're going to arrange the terms in the dividend and the divisor in descending order in power. Uh, just as a quick recap, uh, the, uh, the dividend is the thing that you are dividing, and the divisor is the thing that uh, you are dividing by. That's the thing on the bottom of your fraction. The dividend is in the um, numerator of your fraction here. So you're just going to arrange the terms in each of those things uh, in descending order of power. Here's where the actual process sort of starts. You're going to take the first term in your dividend and you're going to divide it by the first term in your um, divisor. And what you get is gonna, is gonna be the first term, uh, or, yeah, the, the first term in your quotient. Now, when you do this, when you find that first term uh, of your quotient, you're going to write it above the term in the dividend that has the same power. So we keep these uh, pieces uh, straight and we know what's what. Once you've divided the first term in the dividend by the first term in the divisor to get the first term of your quotient, you're gonna take that term that you just found, that first term of your quotient, and you're gonna multiply it into every term in the uh, divisor. That product that you just found, you're gonna write that product underneath your uh, dividend, and you're gonna match up like terms. You will write the terms in your product underneath the terms in your dividend that have the same power then you're going to subtract that product uh, from your uh, dividend. And when you do this, uh, the term with highest power in your dividend uh, is automatically going to uh, be uh, subtracted out to zero. If, if your term with highest power in your dividend is still left over after you subtract, uh, then that means that you had a little math uh, a little math problem somewhere. So go back and check for that. So after you've subtracted uh, that product from your dividend, you're going to bring the next term in the original dividend down, if need be, uh, and write it next to the remainder to get a new uh, dividend. You're going to keep going through steps two through five until the remainder can no longer uh, be divided. And when we say it can no longer be divided, we mean that the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the um, divisor. So if we were dividing something by say, x squared plus two x, 
the degree of the divisor is two, when our remainder looks like something times x plus some constant, then we have to stop because the uh, degree of the remainder, which is one, is less than the degree of the divisor, which is two. But you keep going through steps uh, two through five. You take first term in, in dividend, divide it by first term in the, uh, in the divisor to get the next term in your quotient. Take that term that you just found, multiply it into all the terms in your uh, divisor. Take that product, write it underneath your uh, dividend, matching up like terms, subtract, bring the terms down, and keep going through that process. But we're, as I said, we're gonna do this with an actual sample problem. Uh, so let's do this with uh, 6x cubed minus x squared minus 5x plus four, and I'm going to divide that by 3x minus two. So I've taken care of step one here. Uh, I've written all the terms in the dividend in descending order of power uh, and all the terms in the divisor uh, in descending order of uh, power. Uh, if you've done a long division of numbers, uh, then this should look familiar. Uh, if you have not done long division of numbers or have not seen it, then this may look a little bit new. So we are going to take the first term in the dividend, namely the 6x cubed, and I'm, and I'm going to divide it by the first term in my divisor, the 3x. So I'm gonna use the uh, side here. Six x cubed divided by three x is gonna give me a two x squared. So I'm going to take that term, that two x squared, and I'm going to write it above the term here with the same power. We're gonna match power so we keep things nice and organized, nice and neat. We don't have to mess around with getting terms confused uh, with others. So that was step two in our process. Step three, I'm gonna take this term, which I just found here, and I'm going to multiply it uh, by, and I, I'm gonna multiply it into both terms in my divisor. So 2x squared times 3x minus 2. Uh, if I distribute this, I get 6x cubed minus 4x squared. I'm going to write this term, or yes, um, I'm, I'm going to write this, th these terms, I'll say. 6x cubed minus 4x squared underneath my uh, dividend, and I'm going to subtract this whole thing. Again, note that I wrote these under the terms that had the same power, so we can cancel these things out nice. I have the 6x cubed minus the 6x cubed, that goes out. I have a negative x squared minus a negative 4x squared, or plus 4x squared, to give me 3x squared. And then these terms here, the minus 5x, and the four will just carry down with us. So I have a new uh, dividend that I am going to work with. All right, now check. Is the degree in your remainder less than the degree of your divisor? If it is less, then we stop. If it's greater than or equal to, we have to keep going. Here, uh, the degree is two, here it's one, so we need to go at least one more time with this. I'm gonna take the first term in my dividend and divide it by the first term in my divisor. 3x squared divided by 3x gives me x. Take that x, and write it above 
matching it with the x term uh, that was there. I'm going to take this x value, this x here, I'm going to multiply it into both terms uh, in my divisor. So x, 3x minus 2, 3x squared minus 2x. I'm going to take this expression right here, I'm going to write it underneath. And I'm going to subtract it. Again, note that I just matched up like terms. 3x squared minus 3x squared works out. Those cancel out. Negative 5x minus a negative 2x gives me minus 3x. And then I have the plus 4 here. Okay, a uh, degree of my remainder here is 1 degree of my divisor here is one. They're equal, it's not less than, so I still have to go again, but after I do it this time, I won't have to go uh, anymore after that. So my remainder becomes my new dividend. Negative uh, 3x divided by 3x gives me a negative one. That negative one goes above the constant there. And then I'm gonna multiply each term in my divisor by that negative one. To give me negative three X plus two. Write that underneath. And subtract. Negative 3x minus the negative 3x, those cancel out. And I have 4 minus 2, or 2. So now our remainder is just a constant. The uh, degree of a constant is just 0. So degree 0, degree 1. The degree of my remainder is now finally less than the degree of my divisor, so now we stop. This entire thing up here, that right there, that two x squared plus x minus one, what you get there is your quotient, and this, I'll label that with a Q, and then th this down here is your remainder R. And technically, you don't have to do this, but usually it's nice just to sort of wrap it up uh, and say, therefore, if you've never seen the mathematical symbol for therefore, it is three dots put in a uh, triangular form. Uh, mathematicians are too lazy. They can't write out a nine letter word, so they have to put three dots uh, in its place. So therefore, six X cubed minus X squared minus 5x plus 4 all over 3x minus 2 equals, we write our quotient, 2x squared plus x minus 1. And now that remainder, we, we take the remainder and we put it that over our divisor. So 2 over 3x minus 2. So this is how we would uh, write uh, what the final result is right here. And that is uh, long and division of uh, polynomials. Uh, if you are familiar with a uh, long division of numbers, uh, you'll see it's a very, very similar uh, process. Or now we're just throwing in powers of x into it uh, to make it a little bit more complicated. But all in all, not too bad. So this method you can do for any polynomial divisor and uh, 
dividend uh, combo whatsoever. Uh, your divisor can be some constant times x plus or minus something. It can be a quadratic, it could be a cubic, it could be anything whatsoever. This technique will always work. You can always use this guy. The method of synthetic uh, division, on the other hand, it can only be used when your divisor is in the form x minus some number. It can't be two times x minus something, three times x minus something. It has to be just x and then some number afterwards. Now, note that this is x minus c. Note that minus on there. So if I'm dividing something by, say, x minus 4, then the c value that we're going to use in this method, as you'll see uh, very shortly, the c value is, is going to be positive. If you're seeing x plus something, then that means that your c value is going to be negative. So just like uh, with a long division of polynomials, you're going to take the polynomial uh, that is in your uh, numerator, aka the uh, dividend, and you're going to write the terms uh, in descending order of power. Now, if there are terms missing, uh, then you're going to place a zero co coefficient in there uh, for any missing terms. Uh, by that, I mean, say you had x to the fourth uh, plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 1. Uh, there was no x cubed term in there, so we're going to put it in there, but we're going to give it a coefficient of zero. And that is going to be uh, important uh, for uh, the purposes of going through uh, this method. Step two, you're going to write the, your c value uh, in the divisor x minus c and write the coefficients of the uh, dividend on the right-hand side of a vertical line slash little house type thing, sort of like what we did uh, in long division of polynomials. Now here's where the process itself actually starts. Uh, underneath a long horizontal line, you're going to write the leading coefficient of the dividend on the bottom row. Right away, first number always goes directly underneath uh, your long uh, horizontal bar. Next, you're going to take that number that you just wrote underneath your long horizontal bar and you're going to multiply that number by c. That product that you find, you're going to write it just above the horizontal bar, but in the next column over to the right. This will also make more sense when we go through a sample problem uh, where we use this technique. So you have your product, you wrote it above the horizontal bar, but in the next column over. You're then going to add the numbers in this column uh, and write that sum underneath uh, that long horizontal bar. And then you're going to repeat steps three through five until all the columns are filled. Take the number that you just wrote underneath the long horizontal bar, multiply it by C. That product goes above the horizontal bar, but in the next column over to the right. Add that column, that sum goes underneath uh, your horizontal bar. And you keep going through this uh, until all the columns are filled. Now, what are these numbers telling us? The numbers in that last row, the numbers underneath the big horizontal bar, they give us the coefficients of the terms in the quotient and of the remainder as well. And the degree of the first term of the quotient is one less than the degree of the first term of your dividend that you are given uh, to start with. So say you are given a polynomial uh, whose degree was four, when you get the coefficients uh, in your quotient, that first coefficient uh, is going to be uh, in front of your x cubed term. 
But again, let's go through an actual sample problem uh, to see how this works. Uh, so we are going to divide x cubed uh, plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 5. Uh, we are going to divide this guy by x minus 3. Uh, so note that all of the terms in this polynomial, polynomial here uh, are indeed in descending order. Uh, note that here my C value is going to be a positive 3 because it's x minus C, x minus 3. So C is going to be positive. So there's really no uh, specific way that this has to be done, but I'm going to write my C value here. I like to put that guy all on its own, uh, and then I'm going to write the coefficients of the terms of my polynomial in uh, descending order of power. So it's going to be 1, 4, negative 5, and positive 5. 4, negative 5, and positive 5. And I'm going to draw a long horizontal bar here. And I'm giving myself some room because I know I'm going to have to write numbers uh, underneath here. Fours do not want to cooperate. Uh, so first number automatically goes underneath uh, our long horizontal bar. Take that number that you just wrote, multiply it by your C value, write that product above the horizontal bar uh, in the next column over. So that three is going there. Take the sum of these numbers, the four and the three. Gives me seven write that number underneath the long horizontal bar in that column. We go through this same process. 7 times 3 gives me 21. Negative 5 plus 21 is 16. 16 times 3, 48. 5 plus 48 is 53. So, we had we had x cubed. There we go. Uh, x cubed plus four x squared minus five x plus five, and we divided that by x minus three. put our uh, fancy therefore symbol once again. Now we said that these numbers down here are the coefficients of the terms uh, in your quotient and then it's always the last number here which is going to be your remainder. The last number there is always your remainder. Be sure to keep that straight. The degree of our numerator here is 3, which means that this 1 here is going to be the coefficient on the x squared term. So this is going to be the coefficient for x squared. This is going to be for the x. And then this is just going to be for our constant term here. So it's going to give me x squared plus 7x plus 16, and then we would write the uh, remainder uh, just like how we did in our long division problem. 53 over x minus 3. And that's how we do uh, the method of synthetic um, division. Again, very, very handy when you can use it. It's a lot quicker but you just have to be sure uh, that you don't get tripped up. Try this one on your own. Try to divide 
uh, 5x squared plus x to the fourth uh, minus 7x minus 2 by x plus 4. Uh, see if you can come up with what your quotient is going to be. So press pause, solve the problem, and if, once you think you have it, press play, and we'll see if you are correct. Okay, so let's see if you came up with the correct answer. Uh, first thing you have to note is that the terms in the polynomial are not in order. Uh, so we need to uh, make it so that that is the case. We need x to the fourth. There's no x cubed term here, so we're going to add in a zero x cubed. It's not going to change the quantity that we have. It's going to change how it looks. Then I have the plus 5x squared, uh, the minus 7x, and then the minus 2. And then our c value here, typically it's x minus something. This is x plus 4, so that tells me that my c value is not going to be positive 4, but it's going to be negative 4. So if we set up our little hut or whatever you want to call it, uh, I have a one there. I have a zero there. I have a five there. I have a negative seven and then a negative two. And then write our uh, long horizontal bar. First number always comes down, giving us 1. Uh, 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Add down the column, gets me negative 4. Negative 4 times a negative 4 is a positive 16. Uh, 16 plus 5 is 21. Uh, 21 times negative 4 is negative 84. Uh, subtract 7 from that, it's negative 91. And uh, negative 91 times negative 4 is a positive 364. Uh, and then add negative 2 to that. It gets us positive 362. So we see that we can uh, indeed come up with some uh, massive numbers here uh, based on how things are. And multiplication can get a little uh, crazy here. So we see writing up here, uh, that x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 7x minus 2 all divided by x plus 4 is going to equal. The degree on the numerator was 4, so this 1 here is the coefficient of the x cubed. x cubed minus 4x squared plus 21x minus, minus 91x plus 362 divided by x plus 4. So this right here is our quotient. Uh, so hopefully you came up with x cubed minus 4x squared plus 21x minus, uh, uh, minus 91. It's a typo there, my apologies. Uh, minus 91 plus 362 divided by x plus 4. So these two processes that we just saw showcase something what's known as the uh, division um, algorithm, which says if you have two polynomials, f of x and d of x, uh, and d of x is not just zero, uh, and the degree of d is less than or equal to the degree of f, then there exist unique polynomials q and r such that f is equal to d times q plus r. 
where the uh, degree of r is less than the degree of d, or r of x is identically uh, zero. That's just a nice little statement, whoop de doo uh, But let's use this now, but in the context of synthetic division. In the context of synthetic um, division, our polynomial d is x minus c. So I can write f of x as x minus c times q of x plus r. And r here is just a constant because the degree of r has to be less than the degree of d. And the degree of d is one, so that means r uh, the highest power in R has to be zero. So it's just some constant. If I substitute C in for X into this guy right here, then I get F of C, which is C minus C or zero times Q plus R. And that's just equal to R. Uh, and so that means that if we divide a polynomial by X minus C, then our remainder is just f of c. And this is known as the uh, remainder theorem. Again, nice little fact, not necessarily something I'm going to heavily test you on, but good to know. If we have the case that r is equal to zero, then by the remainder theorem, f of c is equal to zero, which means that c is a root um, and it also says that uh, f of x is equal to q of x times x minus c. And this says that x minus c is a factor uh, of x. And this is the, um, the factor theorem, which says that if f of c is equal to zero, or c is a root of f of x, then we know that x minus c is a factor of f of x. So that completes our video on division of polynomials uh, and the two methods we can do it, either long division uh, or synthetic um, division as the other option. Uh, once again, uh, synthetic can only be used in a particular instance. However, when you can use it, it's a lot friendlier, a lot nicer. You can get tripped up though, so just be very careful. In the next video, we're going to sort of circle back to what we talked about in the previous video. We're gonna talk more about zeros uh, of polynomials. We're gonna learn uh, some new theorems and some new facts uh, to help us figure out what are possibilities uh, for zeros, uh, as well as how many do we have uh, that are negative or positive, uh, or how, how many can we have, should I say. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to reach out to me, send me an email, uh, hunt me down, wave the bat signal up in the air. Uh, otherwise, until the next video, take it easy, guys.